going to talk about a couple of things here. Uh, I mentioned it, but A has to be greater than zero. Okay, your base is should not be a negative number. Okay, that's not an exponential function. That's a different type of function, um, and it can't equal one. Okay, it cannot equal one because think about it for a second. If A is one, you have one to the s. What is one to any power? One. one. So one to the x is just a constant function. Okay, it's not actually an exponential function. So your base has to be greater than zero and not equal to one. <coughs> um, as I mentioned, those are just some generic examples. You can have a negative with the x. You can have stuff added and subtracted in the exponent. Um, we'll look at a few of those things. And then the natural exponential is a special uh, exponential function. E looks like a variable, but it is actually a number. Um, it's two point, and I always forget what it is, uh, it's like 2.7 something. Uh, if you press second and the division symbol on your calculator, there is E, that's just plain E. 2.718 is usually what people uh, round it to. Um, so it actually does have a value. Okay? E looks like a variable because it's a letter, but it's, it's actually representing a number. Um, there's also another place where E is located. If you press second and the LN button, the button beside the number four, it will go ahead and automatically put the exponent uh, beside it and open a set of parentheses for you. So typically you use that one to press second and the LN button, um, but it is located here as well. For the so that's just a little shortcut. Okay, because typically when you're using it, you're going to have an exponent with it. You're not just going to use it by itself. <coughs> There, no, you cannot, uh, you cannot store a variable as, or you cannot store a number as E. You'll notice, um, now there is a, a capital E um, in your alphabet. You can store it there, but the lowercase E is reserved for um, this constant. What is it? Um, I mean, it, it's a constant. It's related to the natural log. Um, which we'll talk about logarithms starting tomorrow, uh, but it's just, it, it's, it's a defined value based on logarithms, so it'll, it'll make a little bit more sense tomorrow. Okay, so for what I want you to do right um, the domain, okay, the domain. Did it matter which exponential function you were looking at? Did the domain change? No, the domain is all real numbers. Um, that in infinity, in uh, interval notation, that would be from negative infinity to positive infinity, or you can write the all real number symbol. Um, in set notation, that means that it's um, uh, using inequalities. You can write it like that, okay? All three of those things mean the exact same thing, okay? You need to be familiar with all of them because they're used pretty interchangeably. All right, now, the range. I answered several questions about this, um, but remember, the range means what are all the possible y values that I could get out of this function. Now, did you notice when you were looking at the graphs, none of them were below the x-axis, right? They were all above the x-axis. And I asked several of you when you were asking me about this, and I said, okay, so what are your y values getting super, super close to? They were getting really, really close to zero. But is it possible for an exponential function to equal zero? No. no. Okay, you can't raise 10 to a power and get zero. You can't raise um, 5 to a negative power and get zero. <clears throat> so the range, you can write it several different ways. You can write it from zero to positive infinity. Okay, that's one way to write it. Or you can say y is greater than zero. Okay, interval notation set notation. Okay, set means that you use inequalities. Now, if our range does not include zero, are we going to have an x-intercept? No. No x-intercepts. The only time, and we're going to look at this, what we're doing is we're kind of building up these functions and then we're going to look at them as a whole. Um, the only time that an exponential function will have an x-intercept is if there's something subtracted from the end of it. So like 10 to the x 
minus two, that's going to shift your entire graph down two units, then it will cross the x-axis. But if it doesn't have anything beside the exponential, then it's not going to have an x-intercept. What were your y-intercepts? One. All of them. All of these had a y-intercept of zero, one. Okay. I do want you to be in the habit of writing your x and y intercepts as points, not just as numbers, write them as points, okay? Now, why would they all have the same y intercept? These are all over zero, they're all negative. Oh, be careful. What are we doing when we figure out the y intercept? What do we do? We make x equal zero. We plug in zero for x. So x, for these four examples, was the exponent. So anything to the zero power is one. That's something you've got to know. Any number raised to the zero power, if you've never heard the statement before, I'm a little upset at your previous passengers, anything raised to the zero power is one. Okay? Any number, any constant raised to the zero power is one. You've just got to know that. Okay? That is a basic math fact that you should know. All right, <clears throat> now, intervals of increasing and decreasing. Now, when we're dealing with polynomials, we would have multiple intervals, right? Because our function would change from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. Does that happen with exponential functions? Do they change? No. no. They are either always increasing or always decreasing, right? Um, two of these were increasing, two of them were decreasing. What was the difference between the two? Okay, so the negative exponent and the fraction were, what were they? Were they increasing or decreasing? They were decreasing. And 10 to the x and e to the x were increasing, okay? So, <clears throat> um, 10 to the x slash e to the x were uh, increasing, and let's just identify that. That's for their entire domain, which was negative infinity to infinity. And 5 to the negative x and 1 half to the x were decreasing. Well, let me show you something about this 5 to the negative x. And my negative doesn't show up very well right there. <clears throat> okay. 5 to the negative x. I'm going to use some properties of exponents here for a second. And I'm going to, and I keep on doing that. I'm going to split up this negative x. I'm going to rewrite that as 5 to the negative 1 to the x. Now, why can I do that? What property of exponents am I using? The multiplication. When you raise a power to another power, you multiply. So negative 1 times x is negative x. So I've just gone backwards, okay? Now what do we know about negative exponents? What can we do with those? We can turn into a fraction, okay? We move that to the denominator to make it a positive 1 exponent, okay? So 5 to the negative x is equivalent to 1 fifth. our conclusion and this is what you, you need to know this um, similar to what you need to know about rational functions without looking at a calculator you need to know this about exponential functions as well when a is greater than 1 a being the base your exponential is going to be increasing when a is less than 1 of course greater than 0 but less than 1 um, then it's going to be decreasing okay so be careful, don't just say if it's a fraction, okay, because three-fifths is a fraction, not three-fifths, three-halves is a fraction, but it's bigger than one, okay? Three-halves is going to be an increasing exponential function. So don't just say if it's a fraction, then it's going to be decreasing, but if it's a fraction less than one, it is decreasing, okay? Uh, so you should be able to, to tell me that right off the bat, just look whether it's an increasing or decreasing uh, exponential function. Now, do we have any extrema? No. no, we don't have any 
extrema because what causes an extrema to happen? A change between increasing and decreasing. If it doesn't change, then you don't have any extrema. So these do not have any extrema. Okay? Um, and then the end behavior, we need to split those into two categories. Um, because the same thing happens. When A is greater than 1, it has a particular in behavior. And when it's less than 1, it has a particular in behavior. So remember what, how we split up in behavior. We said as X is approaching negative infinity and as it's approaching positive infinity, let's talk about the, what, what the Y values are doing. Okay? So when A is greater than 1, meaning we have an increasing exponential function as we go to negative infinity the left side of our function what are our y values headed to zero. zero okay as x is approaching positive infinity so the right side of the function where are the y values going positive infinity okay <clears throat> when it's less than one that's the decreasing function so those relationships are just flipped. Okay, so when we're approaching negative infinity, when our x values are approaching negative infinity, our y values are approaching positive infinity. When our x values are approaching positive infinity, our y values are approaching zero. Okay. Negative infinity, zero. Y values are increasing, but we're using the X values to identify. 